for tuning back into Think Tech Hawaii's Human Humane Architecture. If we can get the first slide up here, uh, we're doing this uh, in the midst of a couple of unimaginable things like uh, the racial rights we have or uh, the corona chaos. And on top of that, related to the two of them, we have sort of economical exoduses on the horizon, but uh, we keep plugging along and do still do the, or even more, do the volume three of our Killingsworth Kahala Hilton hospitality show with my guest, um, who is, was, uh, and uh, uh, Edward Killingsworth, long-term friend and business partner, Ron Lindgren, and he's with us again from his home in Long Beach, California. Hi, Ron. Hello, everyone. Good to have you back, Ron. And we're we're going to our friend and our co-host, DeSoto Brown, back to Honolulu. Hi, DeSoto. Hello, everybody. And and I'm back from uh, the capital of my country in Berlin, heading back to the south. And this shows my commute. You see me at the top right uh, with my mandatory facial mask, and this is a high-speed train, so it's like it's 160 kilometers per hour, so it's hard to do what seems to what we've been always been talking about, that easy breezy is the thing, and now this seems to be so more true in the corona uh, um, era we're having, but at, at this speed, you really can't. At the bottom left, I was changing modes of transportation going to the commuter train that you see at the bottom right, and as we're hoping when things clear up, uh, you guys can join me to study abroad here in Germany. We will visit this um, uh, light rail transportation that I started out by my practice with. And in that train, I recognize you can actually open the windows, and I know. So this is a recommendation for Honolulu. When the hard train comes, you know, if the windows are not operable, we say knock them out and get the fresh breeze through. Uh, because that's going to be the healthy way for us to do it, Brian. Don't advocate but, uh, that at this moment. <laughs> uh, this would be a good riot. So let's go to the next slide here and, and go back a little bit to where I was previously in Berlin and you just sort of share with us what your uh, response about these impressions. Well, first of all, there in the lower left is a picture of a very wide and ample sized lanai, but this is your son Joey's apartment and you, this picture of you and Joey there, and we think that all apartments built in Honolulu should have lanai at least this big in a tropical, popular environment where you can go outside. And even in Berlin, they love the idea of warm weather and they love to dream about the tropical islands. And so here are two crazy pictures showing first a banner in the railway station the, advertising the Ritter Sport chocolate bar and there's a particular one that uh, is called the Hula Hula Coco's Waffle, and they're saying couch surfers, you know, you can lie on your couch and pretend that you're in paradise by eating that. And below that is on a river in Berlin, there is a sightseeing boat, and painted on the side it says tropical islands. So those Germans love to dream about the tropical islands, even though they're in the cold country. The lure of the tropics never get old here. And that's, that's right. actually that river that runs by Clara and Joey. Uh, um, uh, apartment there. Let's go to the next slide. Um, still staying in, in Berlin, and you guys share with me your impressions you had when I was showing this to you. Yeah, so Ron, yeah, tell I'd, us about I'd the like, Hilton. Yeah, I'd like to jump in. You see the uh, Berlin Hilton at the upper uh, right. Uh, Conrad Hilton was uh, a red, white, and blue American through and through. He used his hotels worldwide, really, as sort of propaganda devices for the United States. He wanted every one of his hotels to be modern because, and I quote him, the, that sort of modernism best represented American power, success, and technological superiority. And so, Mark, uh, DeSoto, you jump in where there's an American flag fluttering <laughs> above some beautiful German ladies. That's right. Those are, the, those are obviously the champagne girls, as you can tell by their carrying bottles of champagne. But in the right corner of this slide, we see a tropical drink menu from the Berlin Hilton. And if I remember correctly, it says something like, you know, uh, enjoy these, these drinks. These, I presume they offer tropical cocktails from the tropical Hilton Hotel. And I said, well, that Berlin Hotel is not tropical, but 
we were thinking that maybe they were referring to the other tropical Hiltons, such as the ones which were going to be built here in the Hawaiian Islands that we're going to be focusing on. Exactly. And I have to say, sadly, that one is not existing anymore. Next slide, even more sadly, the one we're having right now at the very top left, or one of the ones we have right now, almost looks like it could have been a product of President Trump's stupid mandate of classicist style, because this is this hideous kind of whatever you want to call it. And even more sadly, is actually an embarrassing is for us Americans, our embassy, our American embassy in uh, Berlin at the top right, which the architects, who's the uh, guys who took over Charles Moore's firm, would Charles would probably turn around in his grave if he would if he would see that. And in contrast, going back to our island uh, at the bottom left, although environmentally not a good example because still a glass box that is not protected from the south and the west harsh sun. But architecturally, actually, halfway decent. This is the Trump Hotel. And ironically, or maybe symptomatically, on his little pit stop on our island, he didn't even stay there, but he stays in what Kurt Sandburn has pointed out, a scandalous project in New York's Cotton and Hill in, in Waikiki. And this is where probably fittingly Trump stayed when he was there. So, wow. Let's go to the next slide. And... Um, basically get our spirits up again. Carlos Santana at the last election was trying to therapeutically come up with a, with a suggestion of having a kind of a world peace gathering with influential people from all over the world. And he said two possible locations for that would be one, the Sydney Opera House, and one, a resort in Honolulu. And we were thinking, what, which one did he have in mind? And we were thinking probably the one we had in mind, which is... The Kahala Hilton we've been yeah. talking about for the last three shows. Yeah. So let's go to the next slide. Trump is the only president who has not stayed in that hotel, which we're proud of, and you guys can be proud of. Yeah. And other ones have, and there are some, you know, who are who were equally not the best, but not as bad as this one here, but getting close. This one here was at least knocked down from the presidency, and uh, the pictures on the left is sort of from your treasure archive box and explain what. In particularly show us? Well, something that uh, the Kahala Hilton had to its advantage, although initially it was not to its advantage, is that it is off by itself in a non-urban area. So it was used as a place where presidents stayed, as you just said. And in 1969, Richard Nixon, when he was in his first stint as president, stayed there for an upper-level uh, discussion um, about the war in Vietnam, and to get to and from the hotel, he was flown in a helicopter that took off and landed from the golf course, the Wailai Country, golf, Wailai Country Club golf course. And that's what you see in the picture in the lower left, them standing next to the helicopter with the Kahala Hilton Hotel in the background. Yeah, and next slide, a guy who was, and we're sort of going back in order out there when they were running, uh, Johnson, who we hear was equally sort of choleric and angry, but never mind that, but uh, share with us w what the pictures show, which kind of setting when he yeah. visited. Well, again, during South Vietnamese uh, war talks, the president of South Vietnam came here more than once for to, to meet with President Johnson, and the picture on the left shows them in one of their early meetings at the Kahala Hilton. There was a power failure briefly, and so they had to have their room lit by candles for a short time. And that is also the time that I got to shake hands with President Johnson in Honolulu when his motorcade went past, where I was standing on the corner of University Avenue and Dole Street in 1966. Exactly. And that's probably very interesting for you, Ron, because you're a proud Vietnam veteran. Yeah, I, I must say that uh, the fact that these presidents put the Kahala on the world stage in a way actually helped the hotel out quite a bit because people got interested in the hotel as a tourist destination as a result. Yeah. Yeah, and let's go to the next slide to, to presidents we like more, and we're going from bottom right and upwards. And this is uh, uh, John F. Kennedy, who was driving through Waikiki, Obvi uh, just missed it to, for obvious reasons because of his bad destination. He just missed to have the chance to stay there. One of our favorite ones then is Jimmy Carter stayed there, and at the top left, 
Barack Obama didn't need to stay there because the island is his home, but he dined there. And at the top right, we threw in that uh, something we have been whispering or hearing whispering that he is going to, uh, Hawaii is going to be his home again even more because he is just building a house on the former Magnum PI um, uh, scenery property. And then on the top right, we, had, we got very excited about when Wayne Johnson, who spent some significant years on the island, was saying, I, I could think of getting nom nominating myself as the president, so hopefully he's going to rethink that at some point and going to you know, run for it, go for it, the rock. So let's go to the next slide, because not only... Um, Presidents had been uh, on the island, but also other important people. And a brief us, Ron, about that. Yeah, when you go to the Kahala, you see uh, in the upper right hand uh, uh, a picture of a lot of photographs. And it's Kahala's uh, wall of fame, where they've shown so many of the, of the celebrities and politicians who have stayed there. It reminds me of something I haven't really been able to, to say yet. And... Most people don't really remember that, That you know, we talk about the Kahala as this great success. When it first opened, uh, it was it was disastrous in the sense that it was perceived as just being too far away from where the action was, which was Waikiki. And so to try to even fill guest rooms, the management had to sort of give some of the way to airline flight crews at very low rates. But then, thank heavens, three consecutive events occurred. First of all, the Los Angeles... TV and uh, movie people discovered it because there weren't. It was quiet, secluded, and the paparazzi were excluded, and it became affectionately known as Hollywood. And then, second, uh, President Nixon, President Johnson, uh, and in fact, all governments around the world realized that if they wanted to have privacy and security for their heads of state, that the Kahala was the place to do it in Hawaii, as compared to the sort of sniper damages or sniper dangers that might, might occur in Waikiki. And lastly, discriminating travelers were hearing about all these celebrities and Saudi princes and emperors of Japan and queens of England coming there and wondering why. So when they booked their own rooms there, they, they discovered why. All of a sudden, the good word spread through the traveling public, occupancy soared, and after a couple very sad years, hotel investors were finally amply re rewarded in terms of what they invested into the Kahala Hilton Hotel. Uh, you might well ask why the lovely head and shoulders of Farrah Fawcett is there in the upper right. That is a reminder that my closest brush with celebrity was watching the lovely Farrah Fawcett slug Rod Stewart in the face <laughs> while we three were standing together at the hotel checkout desk. And that is even better than me shaking hands with President Johnson. Yeah, and unbelievable. I mean, I'm of that generation. You know, we had Bravo magazine pictures of Farrah Fawcett on our wall <laughs> as a teenager in, in the 70s. And then, of course, my parents listened to Rock Stewart and then later on. So this is it's just great background stories. Let's move on and go to the next slide here because staying with celebrities – um, for us, this bridge is a celebrity because we've been talking about it enthusiastically in the last three shows. The guy on the top left picture with a red uh, top is actually uh, another gentleman mentioned in the previous slide in the category of the musicians of the rock stars, and this is Michael Jackson. And while Matt, Michael is gone, unfortunately, as Farah is, um, we and probably unfortunately won't come back, but the bridge we actually is we start out with some suggestions here for when the uh, hotel would be remodeled next time. And again, exotic escapism expert is continuously reminding us there are these intervals when you have to remodel, and you know about that as well, Ron. So the two of you remind us. So when the next remodeling will happen. We would like to see, for example, this beautiful bridge coming back. And, yeah. and you, you, Ron, share with us uh, some sort of, you know, relative thoughts to that, pros and cons about dolphins in particular. Yeah, I, uh, ever since the hotel opened, uh, animal activists in Hawaii have protested the dolphin captivity in the lagoons. But the fact is that these animals have thrived and reprodu reproduced there. Not only that, 
my sources have told me that they've also managed to live out their at least 40-year average lifespan as being Atlantic bottlenose dolphins. So even though I'm not a fan of visiting zoos, I always enjoyed the company of the three or four dolphins uh, that were in the lagoons each time I visited the hotel. Well, and, you know, when you look at the guy, at the dolphin guy, and at the bottom right, and, and you guys shared the memories that the dolphin uh, supposedly jumped over the bridge, it was probably healthy for them. That was that gym, right? So give them back their workout. <laughs> yes. But you get in the way so, when they happen to jump and run into you, yes. Oh, then, then you get to a workout, too. So exactly. To workout. Perfect. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so let's go to the next slide here. Uh, because another thing we like to obviously keep and get back, and you guys share with us what that is on this slide. Yeah, for, yep. from uh, yep, I, ahead, I really love I really love seeing these uh, three pictures because this uh, one of the most exciting things uh, to do at the Gala Hilton uh, to visit or if you stay there is just to sweep on down that beautiful curving stairway and. The combination of a modern building, warm traditional touches of that curving stair and the beautiful wood railing, and then some very appropriate uh, and non-kitschy Hawaiiana, it's all melded there by Ed in what I think is a terrific blending. Yeah. Yeah, and I, yeah, I was also going to say, too, that we, um, Martin and I, years ago by now, did a show about... Uh, the use of lava rock in architecture, both traditional and modern, and I have always really enjoyed the contrast of the very rough textured lava basalt against or with smooth white or shiny surfaces, and that's exactly what goes on right here. Yeah, and we would say next remodel, you know, bring us some of that lava surface back. There's a little too much orchid there, so you don't yeah. see there's a lava rock. So clean this out a little bit. And let us enjoy both, as you see on the top and the left picture. Go to the next slide, because another keeper is what, Ron? We're at the chandeliers back to them. You know, we're looking at uh, the traditional lighting features that were designed by a New York lighting designer who was also uh, a Broadway veteran of lighting many plays and musicals on Broadway. And a woman by the name of Irene McGowan designed these wonderfully unforgettable chandeliers but also on the left-hand side, some sconces. And they used all of this sort of chunky glass bits. And I've always thought that if you look at each of those individual chunks of glass, that they actually look like sort of the beach glass that you'd find if you were out scavenging a beach. Yeah. And, you know, I, that always reminds me that when the hotel opened, I remember my mother saying that. So either she read that as publicity or she herself got that same idea and just by the way we got a couple of days to go until your mother is hungry first yes that's right <laughs> and our suggestion is again both your mother and the hotel are keeper they're vintage they're gem yes so we got to treat them well and you thankfully do with your mom and uh the owners should do with your hotel and so we're saying, obviously, do what, again, we were recalling when, when Ed was talking to Harvey Keller in that video, that you, Ron, when you remodel it, were uh, convincing the Mandarin owner, the new owner, to keep the channel here, is that they had thought of being sort of a little out and said, no, they are as, you know, fresh as they have always been. So we're saying, obviously, keep them in the future, but maybe some have been replaced, so maybe you got to remodel them, because, again, you got to bring this back to its original because it is an original. Yeah. So let's go to the next slide. And why all that? Not just because we say this uh, in repeatedly in many shows, but because this gentleman, Don Hibbert, has featured the Kahala Hilton in his very famous book, Designing Paradise, and has given it, again, uh, major attention. And tell us a little bit briefly um, about because that's the time when you first met Don when he was doing the book and you were also preparing for your legendary Dunkle Momo talk, your, your talk story, Don, right? Yes, uh, Don Hibbard uh, had asked myself and my, my design partner, Larry Stricker, for some, some help in writing 
is Chapter 7, which is on Killingsworth's contributions to Hawaiian uh, hospitality architecture. And that suddenly led to Don asking me if I'd come over and make a presentation uh, to about 30 people, uh, architects, uh, Martin Despang, by the way, some architectural photographers, some students, which I really enjoyed. And that was the first of what now has been 14 different separate species all around the place on Ed's career. So thank you, Don Hibbert, for getting me started on such a good endeavor. Yeah. And more to come, Ron. Yes. More to come. Let's go to the next slide, and maybe so to share us another reason why you think that ship it is a keeper. Well, one of the things that I've done in the past in conjunction with you, Martin, has been to talk about the history of innovation here in the Hawaiian Islands. And that's what you see in the upper right corner of this slide. But to also point out that the Kahala Hilton Hotel, as designed by Ed Kellingsworth, is an extremely innovative hotel, extremely innovative structure. We won't get into all the details about that because we've talked about that in the previous shows. But this, except, this is also another reason why this structure needs to be kept and preserved because of its innovative nature and its uniqueness, not only here in Hawaii, but anywhere in the world. Well, and speaking of that, let's go to the next slide because um, it's so unique because it was such a pioneer also in environmentalism. And this isn't the case anymore in current development. No on the island, which we see at the top right, which we were talking about before, um, and not somewhere overseas. And you, Ron, shared with us when you were shocked to hear and see what we see in the large picture. Yeah, you know, that large picture, which has an industrial design sparkle on it to try to make it interesting, is something that uh, does not make me particularly happy. For some reason, the Kahala management has decided to put a sort of inappropriate uh, title to a new hotel that is planned, and I think it's under construction already, in Yokohama, Japan. Now, this is so inappropriate. Uh, Yokohama is certainly not tropical, and also this building looks like anything else but a hotel. It looks like some sort of office building. And if you see that swoop or curve at the end of the building's mass, here's a kind of vain attempt to make a banal building look at all interesting to the human eye. I I'm sorry that management is following Trump's footsteps in sort of cynically uh, packaging names of, for reasons that I don't want to discuss. Yeah. Yeah, and next slide, showing or proving that this is sort of a, a sad trend even, is that even the IU Praise Mandarin Group, because they were very good new owners way back when you were remodeling the Kahala Hilton, and they bought it from, from Mr. Hilton, and you did the remodel for them. This is what they're proposing uh, right now, and you just sort of said uh, it hasn't been breaking ground and hasn't been going up, but we're hoping it won't for a while as one of the few good things from this very bad things happening around us because this is another microwave. Yeah. And the and the rendering at the bottom we see this is facing nine ahead. So we know this means south and west, no overhang, no lanai. This shouldn't happen, right? Yeah, as you say it's a yeah. microwave. It is. And that being said, next slide, also in, in this um, travel uh, online uh, blog, uh, there is uh, the author is enthusiastically sharing environmental systems in a hotel that is so unique. And we have been pointing this out a while ago, uh, reference for the show quote at the top right, that the hotel is positioned perfectly facing south and north. And what that does with a north elevation, which we see at the top left, you want uh, to explain to us a little bit more in detail. Yeah, uh, the, it faces north, and those people don't have direct ocean views, but they have this glorious view across the verdant Wailai Golf Course to the to the mountains, uh, and they don't get uh, they don't get uh, sunlight. Uh, they just sit out there in the lanais and enjoy the beautiful tropical weather. I have to mention one quick thing about the that particular photograph. The very last thing that uh, Ed Killingsworth's office did at the Kahala was that in 2001, some uh, guest rooms at grade were remodeled into a spa where guests could be pampered. And that's some outdoor seating that ties into the spa. And this was designed by my partner, uh, Larry Stricker, who also designed the Manalani 
Bay Hotel on the Big Island and the original Iilani Hotel at Ko'olina on Oahu. Yeah, and we will have uh, Larry uh, doing two shows about these with us soon. So, Larry, good to have you on air soon. Go to the next slide, which shows us the southern elevation of the hotel and the lanai's uh, the room that have an eyes shade the glass below. And, and this is touchy now because I might be thrown off the, my local Momo board membership when I'm saying touching uh, an icon somehow. But as you just saw, and I, thankfully, you, Ron, as the creator, agrees that things shouldn't be like mummies and dead, but they should evolve. So I remember in the kindergarten we designed, uh, which I referenced up right there, we used some horizontal, we used some vertical textile shading that maybe could be added behind the beams and could be retractable and roll out and roll back in so you hardly see them. But they, again, they improve the bike, the already perfectly um, placed, um, you know, originally bichromatic performance. And then the next slide, uh, Ron, we got a rush because we got a few minutes left, but there we see you in the hallway pointing out how large the hallway is. And again, in corona times, social distancing is the thing. So you said well, once you stay close to one side of the hallway and the other person on the other side, you might get that distance that, that's recommended to us. Also from the kindergarten at the top right, I remember there's technology that allows you to get air through while keeping fire and sound out. So that might be another suggestion to retrofit and make this hotel actually a really good post-pandemic production uh, and be once again, or continue to be at the forefront of tropical hotel design in the changed days. And the next slide um, is basically, um, uh, so you want to nominate someone for the job, maybe when it gets remodeled again? Well, our friend Bundit um, and his design partner Janice, we both admire them, and I did a show uh, a while back about the small loft apartments that they dis that they uh, built in um, Macaulay here in Honolulu, the Macaulay District, and appeared which appeared in an episode of Magnum PI. And we know that they're sensitive. We know that they're talented, and maybe they're people who could work on this as well. Exactly, and um, yeah, I, you know, Janice, I would, yeah, go ahead. I was going to ju just jump in and say that uh, uh, I certainly hope that uh, a local architect and interior designers are involved. Uh, there's no question that you can bring good taste from anywhere, from New York, from Los Angeles, whatever. But unless these people know the islands, perhaps have even lived there, they aren't really going to provide the sort of appropriate uh, and non kitschy Hawaiiana that the Kahala has shown all these years and deserves to continue showing. Yeah, and thank yeah. you for saying that, Ron, because I'm totally with you 100% on that. And Janet, by the way, works for the other firm that has become big in hospitality on P. Wimbley, and you run and share and you had collaborated with them on the remodel of the Hale Kalani. Um, so if they get the job or not, or otherwise, I uh, said London and you, Ron, are going to do the job because yeah. it doesn't qualify. And uh, we face out with the last six <laughs> Well, maybe Ron is retired now. He doesn't want to deal with that anymore, I think. Oh, he has to. He has to get out, out of retirement. Like All right. Unretire. <laughs> All right. Go to, the, go to the last slide here. And, and throw out another sort of provocative thing. Well, in the show about our second show about the color of Mount Martin, after we visited together, we were saying probably not first choice for the current inhabitants, but maybe still to keep the building um, would be that the hotel takes over to uh, basically maybe it's the suite. But now that things have changed so dramatically through the virus, maybe it's the other way around. It basically, while you know tourism is down, but the demand for housing on the island will stay and continue to increase. Maybe the hotel becomes condominium. And uh, with that one, we're out of time. So thank you guys very much about our final show about this masterpiece of Ed and Neuron. This is super exciting, and we wish the project all the best for the future. It's very, very hopeful. And so, uh, again, we're going to see each other 
again sometime soon. We're going to see Larry as one of the two shows. We're going to see you along back uh, to show a couple of examples where this um, work has led you to work in other tropics than, than ours in, in, in Honolulu. Yeah. And uh, with that, uh, next week is going to be uh, uh, me with Jay Fidel uh, talking about how your work long and, and has inspired uh, other generations of architects uh, with projects under a very different circumstances that we have right now. So, thank you guys again. Okay. Yeah, be, and we'll all be back. Goodbye to we retire. <laughs> From under retirement, yes. Yeah. Bye bye. <laughs>